Listen up, people. Here we go. Here's the plan, okay? We're gonna make a gaming console, right? A Kentucky Fried Chicken console. Best part, it's got a built-in chicken warmer. And then I want to make a comic book with different versions of me populate the multiverse. I want to be the voice of GPS navigation. And I want my own dating simulator. And I want Mario Lopez to play me in a Laftar movie. Yeah. I think the colonel may have discovered a 12th secret herb, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Internet. Welcome to Film Theory. Y yep, it is Film Theory. You did not accidentally click on a Food Theory episode. I promise you're in the right place. Theorists, today's episode is all about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Heck, all of today's episodes are about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Game Theory, Food Theory, Film Theory, all about KFC. Yep, the fast food restaurant. And no, absolutely none of it is hashtag spawn. Probably should have been. Probably should have tried to have gotten that, but nope, blame it on the winter crazies, blame it on quarantine brain, heck, blame it on the curse of the colonel, but for our first ever three-way collaboration across all the theorist channels, heck, it's actually a four-way collaboration because GT Live's involved too. Look at this! Oh, those <laughs> games! Oh, wow! <laughs> oh, wow! Whoa, the rivals? There's so many characters! There is... That was great. Right? That was... I, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm satisfied already. I'm satisfied. For our first ever four-way collaboration across all the theorist channels, I had the idea to make it about KFC. <laughs> yes. What am I doing with myself? It seems insane, I get that, but bear with me here. As you probably know, KFC is the keeper of one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of our time, Colonel Sanders' secret recipe blend of 11 herbs and spices. Today, KFC keeps the recipe physically locked in a vault in their Louisville headquarters. They've hired two separate companies to produce separate halves of the recipe so that no one person, not even KFC's own head chef, is privy to the entire thing. Naturally, this level of secrecy has piqued the curiosity of KFC fanatics across the globe. And for decades, people have been trying to do everything they can to figure it out. People have run lab analyses on the chicken served in KFC restaurants. They've attempted to recreate the exact flavor at home through meticulous trial and error. They've latched onto recipes found in heirloom scrapbooks. They've even picked apart the brains of the late Colonel Sanders' business partners. But according to KFC, no one has ever gotten it quite right. Which again is kind of ironic because the whole shtick is that no one person knows the true recipe, so do you know it, KFC? Do you not know it? Hmm, suspicious MatPat is suspicious. My eyes narrow in your direction, KFC. So the TLDR here is that plenty of people have approached this from a variety of different scientific and analytic angles, but has anyone ever tried to solve it from a film angle? I ask because in December, KFC released a movie, a Lifetime mini-movie to be more precise. It's titled A Recipe for Seduction, and uh, yes siree, that is Mario Lopez. Lopez playing the colonel himself, Harland Sanders, a little adorable crouton wearing dollar store facial hair. Don't call me crouton. Now, it would be easy to just write this thing off as some marketing stunt, and yes, it is most definitely that. The script is, at times, indistinguishable from a KFC ad. The chicken is delicious, Bunny. Oh, please. We both know I can't cook like this. It's my new chef. He's incredibly talented. Though I gotta admit, not many chicken ads I've seen in the past feature a plot where a girl's mother is having an affair with her daughter's fiance. You remember our long weekend in the vineyard? How could I forget? If you marry my daughter, I promise there'll be more long weekends in your future. What? What am I watching? Oh, it's so gross. What sort of post-apocalyptic capitalist dystopia do we live in? It is a KFC soap opera. And here I am sitting and writing an episode about this. Oh gosh, I'm part of the problem, aren't I? Anyway, I'm here to tell you that a recipe for seduction might be more than just an ironic, self-aware way to boost KFC sales. Much more. You see, theorists, I believe that this mini-movie is absolutely saturated with hints about the Colonel's world-famous secret recipe. That's right, a recipe for seduction may also be a recipe for KFC's original recipe. And that, my friends, is a recipe for a film theory. So hold on to your badly spirit-gummed facial hair theorists, because this one is gonna be finger-licking good. Now, in order to properly enjoy this mini-movie, you're gonna have to take everything you might know about the real-life Harland Sanders, the cantankerous senior citizen who 
launched the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise in 1952, and who one time punched a dude out cold in court and jettisoned it all out from your mind. See, KFC's been playing around with the whole Colonel Sanders character fast and loose in recent years. From their famous commercials in which different actors portray the Colonel, to their DC Comics collaboration in which different versions of the Colonel exist across the multiverse, to a KFC-themed dating simulator which we played on GT Live that allows people to date the Colonel. And they're at it again in a recipe for seduction. Here, Harlan Sanders is young, contemporary, and likes to show off his biceps. And for as crazy as the real-life stories of Harland are, he, to my knowledge, did not launch his chicken restaurant after surviving a kidnapping and murder attempt by his rich employer. Just kill him already! Mom! Now, the plot of A Recipe for Seduction feels very on brand for a Lifetime movie. A beautiful young woman named Jessica is being pressured to marry Rich. We're weeks away from the bank repossessing our house. But it's so unfair. Our family's livelihood shouldn't depend on who I choose to marry. I'm sorry, Jessica. Marrying Billy is the only thing that can save us. But instead of falling for Billy, the wealthy jerk that her mother wants her to marry, Jessica instead falls in love with her family's newly hired private chef, Harlan Sanders. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Harland doesn't have himself a penny to his name, but he does have a secret recipe that could one day change the world. Tell me about you, the Harland Sanders story. If I were the author of it, I'd have a chapter in there about my secret recipe changing the world. Oh, a secret recipe? How mysterious. So it pretty much has everything you want in a feature-length lifetime rom-com. Campy romance, over-the-top villains, soap opera-level violence, fried chicken. But A Recipe for Seduction is also super self-aware and condensed down into a speedy 16 minutes. I'm happy to report that it's actually a really fun watch, even for a guy like me who doesn't usually seek out lifetime movies. In fact, if you want to watch it right now, the whole thing is available on YouTube. Again, hashtag not spawn. But if you do end up going over there and watching it, leave a comment telling them that they should sponsor us in the future. You don't have to pay me for these videos, but please just send me a giant statue of Harlan Sanders himself. But the moment in the movie that really got my theory juices flowing was this. Billy, intent on finding a way to get the hunky new chef out of the picture, sneaks into Harlan's kitchen and finds his secret recipe written on a piece of paper, and they actually show it on screen for a split second. The secret's out, chicken man. Rewind that one back. Pause it. There. Folks, this is it. At long last, the Colonel's secret recipe is going to be revealed to us. Zoom in. Enhance. Enhance again. In. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, that's a bit of a letdown. There is no new info on the paper. It's just KFC teasing us. But this is what I'm talking about when I say that the mini-movie is self-aware. They know that we were all going to pause it in that moment. They know that we're dying to find out the secret of this recipe. And just because they didn't show us the handwritten recipe on screen doesn't mean that they didn't give us something to snack on. As I kept watching, I began to notice a recurring theme. See if you can spot it. For some reason, there are citrus fruits littered throughout this entire mini-movie. Remember, its runtime is only 16 minutes, and yet lemons, limes, and oranges make dozens of on-screen appearances. And look, I get it. The movie is about a chef, so we're bound to see a number of ingredients throughout the movie. But this very specific pairing of lemons, limes, and oranges appear across multiple scenes. It was enough to get me suspicious. Sure, maybe they're just there to add a splash of color on screen, but how do you explain this? Arlen Sanders, the new cook. Harland was head chef at Le Petit Pamplemousse. It's an incredibly random line that doesn't go anywhere, and it's weirdly specific in the way that it gets me to start asking questions. You see, Le Petit Pamplemousse translates to the little grapefruit, yet another citrus fruit. I mean, they could have picked any fancy-sounding restaurant name they wanted. They could have tossed in a chicken reference or a Kentucky reference, but they went with grapefruit? Coincidence? I think not. It is so random that it can't be random. Friends, this can be no oversight on the part of the filmmakers. What's the deal with all of this citrus? Because surely there can be no citrus fruits in the Colonel's secret recipe, right? The real-life Harlan Sanders was an accomplished cook and proud southerner. For him or anyone else to put fruit into a savory southern fried chicken recipe would be, well, it would be unusual to say the least. Sure, I guess fruit technically meets the criteria to be considered a spice since it's part of a plant that's used to flavor food, but there's no 
grapefruit on any spice rack I've ever seen. So what's the deal, KFC? Why'd you go out of your way to litter your own mini-movie with all these citrus references unless there was a reason to do so? So I did some research on the topic and I discovered that we can all rest easy. There is absolutely no reason to believe that Harlan Sanders ever included citrus fruits in his fried chicken recipe. However, the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise is a different story. In fact, the fine print on their own website explicitly states that citrus is indeed involved. More specifically, citric acid. Now, let's hit the pause button for a moment because this is an important distinction to make. KFC may call it their original recipe, but the fried chicken you're served at KFC today is not identical to the fried chicken you would have been served at KFC in, say, the 1960s. See, in order to keep the food quality consistent across their growing number of franchises, Kentucky Fried Chicken, which Harlan Sanders sold in 1964, elected to streamline the processes by which KFC's menu items were prepared. After all, not every KFC employee can be as gifted in the kitchen as the great Colonel Sanders, so the simpler they could make it, the better. It should also be noted that Harlan Sanders was quite unhappy and quite vocal about what he perceived to be a slippage in quality after the KFC franchise was sold to the new ownership. So yeah, over the decades there have been some tweaks to the Colonel's original recipe for business-related reasons. KFC claims the original 11 herbs and spices remain unchanged to this very day, although they've admitted other aspects of the recipe and preparation methods have received facelifts, such as the adoption of soybean oil as their frying oil of choice, especially in the US. You see, in the 20th century, soybean oil wasn't yet cost-effective enough to be used by huge franchises like KFC, but in recent years, soybean oil has grown in popularity and availability thanks to the fact that it's low in saturated fats and contains no trans fats. However, while healthier, soybean oil does have a downside. Soybeans in their natural state have a high concentration of linolenic acid, which causes the oil to spoil much more quickly than traditional frying oils. Fortunately, there are certain additives, including citric acid, that can improve soybean oil's performance as a frying oil. So that's why KFC now adds citric acid to its frying oil. It allows them to use a healthier oil. Now, most of the additives listed in the fine print of KFC's site, like TBHQ, don't affect the taste of the food in any detectable way. Citric acid, however, has an extremely strong taste, and it's possible that the sour citrusy taste is at least mildly detectable in the fried chicken. Care to guess what citrus fruits contain the highest concentration of citric acid? They would be lemons and limes, followed by grapefruits and oranges. That's right, the exact same four seemingly out-of-place citrus fruits that are featured throughout a recipe for seduction. This is the real reason KFC made a mini-movie centering around the Colonel's secret recipe. They wanted to point us recipe seekers in the right direction. Many, many people have attempted to recreate KFC's original recipe over the course of many, many years, but their so-called original recipe is ever-evolving. So anyone who wants to recreate the exact taste of the fried chicken at KFC needs to keep up with the times. Citric acid is a contemporary tweak to the recipe, which is why KFC decided to draw our attention to it using a contemporary reimagining of the kernel in a recipe for seduction. But hey, that's just a theory, is what I would normally say at this point. See, we don't run into this kind of situation every day here on Film Theory, but today, we don't have to speculate about this and wait to see if it's true. We can actually run an experiment and find out today if this was just a theory after all. And that's exactly what Steph and I are doing over on the Food Theory channel in a video uploaded at the same time as this one. We've taken this theory, along with some of the most legit KFC original recipe recreation attempts out there, and we're answering the question once and for all. What is KFC's secret recipe? What's the blend of spices? Is the inclusion of citric acid the missing puzzle piece that's kept us from matching the taste of KFC's fried chicken exactly? Spoiler alert, I think we found ourselves a solution. It didn't make sense to do it over here, so head on over to Food Theory right now to see what it takes to crack the code. That episode is up right now, so click the video that you see on screen or the link in the top line of the description to check it out. And once you've done that, head on over to Game Theory, where we are also talking about KFC and their next generation gaming system. No joke, that has itself a chamber to keep your chicken warm, which, the biggest shocker of all, is not as dumb as you think. So if you want to follow the natural viewing loop, I'd suggest heading over to Food Theory next, where we have part two to this episode that you just watched. Then continue over to Game Theory, where we just posted the episode about how KFC just won the console wars. Oh yeah, and also before you go, just consider subscribing. Help make this the year when Film Theory crosses the 10 million subscriber mark. So get on it guys, you've got yourself a ton of KFC content to fill up on. But as always, remember, they're all just theory.
theories, and this one was a film theory. And don't call me Crouton.